Hi there, and welcome to this e-lesson on mind maps. My name is Lee Campbell, and you can find me and my colleagues, the learning coaches, in the skills centres located at each campus. So you may be asking yourself, what is a mind map? Um, I wouldn't worry about that for now. That's exactly what this session is all about. So let's get started. And by the end, you'll feel much more confident about using them. If I didn't know what something was, I would probably go ahead and ask Google. So let's do just that. Okay, so I found a dictionary definition of a mind map here, and it tells me that it is a diagram in which information is represented visually, usually with a central idea placed in the middle and associated ideas arranged around it. That's all well and good, but in practice, what does it actually look like? Well, if I want to know what something looks like, I think Pinterest might be a good way of exploring visual things. So I've typed in mind maps and site colon www.pinterest.com. Here's a link, the best 25 mind map ideas. And it's presented me with a very visual display here. Let's have a look. Okay, the very first one, uh, something on ethics. Very visual, lots of information, lots of effort put into that in someone's notebook. Here we have one all about time. This is a really nice one, lots of illustrations. Um, developmental psyche, uh, something there with lots of text, a bit too much text maybe. Let's scroll down the page. Okay, you've got a, quite a graphic one here, a central idea and lots branching out around it. Okay, let's keep scrolling down, see if we can find one or two more. There's a very attractive one, lots of little bubbles coming out of a central idea and um, information coming off each bubble. Okay, so the one we stopped on here is not a uh, classic example of a mind map, but it does have many features which uh, you would be looking for, which is a central idea, branching ideas, and then within each branch there are subsequent branches, uh, here shown by little arrows, each one pointing to topics and then subtopics and then sub subtopics. Uh, there's a little bit of text at the bottom which says, for the uninitiated, a mind map is a graphical organization of ideas and concepts that can be used to facilitate the generation of ideas and the learning process. So why would you actually want to use a mind map? The first reason is that they're a great way of getting started on a piece of work. If you're not quite sure what to write about, you can start with that central idea in the middle of your page and then just come up with other ideas off the edges and then more ideas coming off that until you've fully explored your topic. You might not use all of the items on your mind map, but what it will do is allow you to just think in a non-linear fashion, just to think quite freely and to fully explore an idea. Because it's not a list, because it's not simply A, B, C, 1, 2, 3, it means that you can keep revisiting your mind map and add more branches and squeeze them in at any time. Another reason to use a mind map is that they're going to really help you to remember information. Now you probably know that thing about tying a knot in your handkerchief. Well, how does that help you remember things? It's simply the act of tying the knot, which is quite an unusual thing to do which helps you remember that there was something on your mind and that tying the knot will help you to get back to that thing you were trying to remember. Now the same happens with a mind map. Because you've put that effort in to creating a mind map, rather than just simply lying in bed and staring at the ceiling and thinking of ideas, the fact that you've put those ideas down on paper and perhaps done some doodles, some sketches, some design work, coloured in a few bubbles, all those things are going to help you to really consolidate those thoughts. Think about when you're going somewhere which you, you know but aren't massively familiar with. You might not be able to draw a map all the way there or give verbal directions all the way there but when you start from place A and then you go to place B and then place C, each stage along the way helps you remember the subsequent stage. So it is with mind maps. If you're trying to remember something from the outside of your mind map, just go back to the middle and follow your thought process, follow those branches until you reach those thoughts on the outside of the mind map. And that is how they help you to remember information. 
Mind maps also encourage you to use the creative side of your brain. So once again, you're not simply listing things. You're not simply going to be trying to batter your way through an idea. It's a way of thinking around corners. It's a way of generating ideas which, even though you might not use, they might provide you with new, more interesting and better ideas. So even though some of the things you jot down on your mind map might not be of direct interest, some of the things which branch off that might then find its way into your work. One of the worst things in the world for an artist or a writer might be the blank page, the blank canvas. You have this thing which you have to fill up and you don't really know how. But when you start with a mind map, all you have to do is start with that initial, that simple single idea, whether it's hygiene or politics, whether it's history, just jot that one thing down in the middle. And even if you can only think of a few things branching off it, you will soon start to think of things branching off that and things branching off that. And soon you have stimulated your mind to make connections between all those ideas and to really explore a topic. And that is how you get creative thinking out of a mind map. I mentioned that it's a non-linear way of organizing information. Well, think of linear as being like a list or a timeline. So you'd start with A and then you'd go on to B and then you'd go on to C, and then you'd go on to D. Um, these things are useful if something needs to be done in a particular order. But when you're just generating ideas, you don't really want to be stuck to a linear, a linear approach. What's better is to think in a non-linear way, a non-hierarchical way, a way in which all ideas are possible and anything could happen. So instead of having A, then B, then C, you could just have A, then D, then C. Instead of having one and then two and then three, you could have one and then three and then two. It means that anything can be placed in any particular order and organized after the fact. So what can you actually do with a mind map? Well, a simple use for it is brainstorming or generating ideas. Let's say, for example, you're trying to start a business and you don't really know what business you want to start. You can use a mind map to start getting those ideas onto paper. If I was starting a business, I would start with the question, what do I like? And then I would go from there. So in the middle of the mind map, I'd start with me. And then I'd start having branches saying what things I like, food, fun, television, games. I might decorate the mind map a little bit, start using different colors, different colored bubbles. And then from each topic, I would add branches with subtopics coming off them. Oh, so what do I like to do for fun? Sport, hanging out with my friends, jokes. What kind of games do I like? Chess, card games, Monopoly. What TV do I watch? Walking Dead? Sports on TV? Oh, quiz shows. What food do I like? Hmm, coffee? Cakes? Vegan food? Okay, how can I put these together into an idea? <clears throat> um, how about vegan sports? Hmm, vegan sports? Oh, I'll start a vegan sports cafe. Okay, so that was my first use for a mind map, but what else can I use it for? You can also use it to plan a website, 
Okay, so not all of you will be doing something as complicated as this, but in uh, the 21st century, many people use websites for many different things, and in future, you may have a useful one yourself. So how would I use it to plan a website? Well, I'd start with thinking about the visitor experience, and first of all, I would start with my landing page or my home page, and then I would think what pages I would have coming off there. So I would start with a contact page. I'd want all my customers to contact me. I would have a page of testimonials. That's a place where my previous customers can post all their positive reviews. I would have an events page so I can put on anything I want really. Sales, um, pop-up shops, anything which I'm doing to get more business. I would have a page so my visitors could meet all of my staff. Um, perhaps this means they could get a look at them before they even enter the shop. Most importantly, I would have a page for all my services so that my customers know exactly what it is that I can do for them. So let's say I'm running a um, photography business. <clears throat> Perhaps I would have a page for celebrity photographs to, um, so I can go to your event and take photography at your special event. I might have a page for portraits, family portraits. I might have a page for landscapes. Maybe I take landscapes and just sell the images. I would have a page for architecture so I can come along and photograph your building. And of course, I would have a page for wedding photography. Sub-pages on my staff page would include a page for myself, the company director, a page showing off my photography team, a page for all my administrators, and a page for all the sales assistants. Once I have created my rough mind map, I can then go and hit the computer and create a more formal plan. One of the main uses in college for a mind map is to use it as a basis for your essay. So I would start in the middle with my essay title, what are the factors that affect health? Physical environment, individual characteristics, social economic environment, individual behaviors, education, support networks, income, social status. Notice how I'm color coding these and placing them around individual topics. Pollution, transport, rural, urban, all coming away from the physical environment topic. Gender or sex, genetics and personal history, all coming away from the individual characteristics topic. Feelings, addiction, preferences, all coming away from the individual behaviors topic. And let's just zoom out and there we can see the whole of my, my mind map. Okay, so those are all the ideas for my essay, but how can I turn this into an actual plan? Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and t turn my mind map into a series of boxes and then start arranging them. Um, I'm going to start with my essay title and then put my, put my three separate subheadings, which are going to be sections for my essay, and then start arranging in a linear format now, in a linear format, all of the subtopics. Let's just tidy these up a little bit. Okay, so there's the title of my essay. And then I'll have an introduction. Um, each of those individual topics in pink, I'm going to call sections. And then and I've got all the sections in pink with the individual topics coming off of those then. And a conclusion right at the end. Okay, so let's say I'm writing a 3,000 word essay. How am I going to organize that? I might have 150 words for my introduction. I've got four paragraphs of 200, 200 words each for section one. 
and then three paragraphs of 200 words each for section three and for section four. Okay, so this is shaping up to quite a nice plan. Let's see whether this hits my 3,000 word total. I'll have 150 words my conclusion. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly total that up. Okay, that gives me 2,900 words. I'll just increase uh, my conclusion and my introduction by 50, and that gives me my 3,000 words. Let's just tidy up all the colours. And there, in pink, running along the bottom of the screen, I've got a fantastic plan for my essay based on my mind map. So the rule is for creating mind maps is always to start with a central idea. Let's do a fresh mind map and call it the arts. And then off that I'll have a series of branching topics, which are topics for the arts. Off each one I'll have more branching topics. And then at any point in the future I could just add more and more branching topics. Notice down in the bottom left from music, I've only got two branching topics. But each of these is going to be added to, and I can just go into even more detail anytime I want to. If I run out of space, I can just resize the whole thing and add more topics. So mind maps can, of course, be drawn by hand. Um, let's just imagine I'm um, doing a mind map around the topic of mental health. I would start in the middle with my topic. And then, coming off the central topic, I would choose some subtopics. Let's go for biological factors. Let's have social factors. And, of course, psychological factors. Okay, once I've got my initial topics, I then need some more branches coming off of each of those to describe my subtopics. Okay, let's start with social and let's put in peers. Let's put in um, family circumstances. Maybe we could have uh, the effects of drugs. Let's move over to biological and put in um, disability. Let's also add physical health and genetic uh, variations. Um, Okay, let's move over to psychological and let's put in self-esteem. Next, let's add coping skills and add IQ. Finally, let's put in temperament. Um, other factors, not quite sure where to put them. There's um, family relationships. Now, where should we put family relationships? Let's put that in social. Um, and then there are traumatic experiences. I guess that would fit into social as well. Then, because this is a mind map, um, we can join separate areas which uh, aren't just branching from the centre, because some of these might actually connect to more than one area. Okay, so let's take drug effects for example. That is obviously social, but may also be connected to um, your biology because different drugs will have a different effect on you and it may even be connected to your psychology. So we can also look at your family relationships um, because clearly they are social but they may also be based on psychology and things that have happened to you in the past. Okay, so finally we have quite an interesting mind map now with different areas being connected up so it's not just um, branching but it's also going back on itself in some areas and connecting different um, different topics so we can go ahead and um, color this in if we like as with our previous mind map I can look at all of these topics look at all of the topics and then rearrange them in a way which suits um, suits an essay structure that is going to help me produce a plan which I can use to write my essay Okay, so that's probably all you need to know to get started. And um, there are some links just below this in Moodle, which you can, you can look at and follow the links to find out more. 
And of course, if you need any more help, come and ask us. That's the Learning and Skills Coaches in the Skills Centre. Thanks very much.